1.1 is just around the corner for Wuthering Waves and I see everybody, literally everybody do a 1.0 account review. So I thought, you know what, let me do it as well. Let me let me get in on the fun, okay? Now this is a big disclaimer. This is by no means a free-to-play account. This is far from a free-to-play account, okay? I have been refreshing, max refreshing uh, a lot of the times on a daily basis pretty much. And um, I did swipe to get some characters However, I also got lucky. So it is a lucky spenders account that has been refreshing a lot. Okay, this is a, this is the disclaimer. Okay, just before you go in and before you be like, yo, what the hell? Like, why are you so far ahead? Or why are you this union level? Why you got so many characters? How did you do it? It's money, guys. It's money. Come on, we're playing a gacha game. Relax. Okay. So without any further ado, let's let, let's get into it. Let's start it. Okay. First thing I'm gonna talk about is probably progression. So how far I am when it comes to progression in this game. Now, uh, I'm going to start off with exploration. As you can see, I have 100% of the whole map. Uh, the whole map is pretty much 100%. Now, 100%ing a map on here isn't necessarily 100% in the map, map period. Because there are some areas that you will have like 99%, I'm pretty sure. Like, it says 100%, but you see, for example, Warming Bay is 99% on the supply chest. So that's literally like one supply chest that I'm missing in the whole map that I cannot find. And that is it. That is it. And the rest is cleared. It's gone. Okay. So this is it. This is it. This is a full, complete map. That means I've done all of the side quests, uh, character quests. I think I've only got Yinlens to do. Now, I was saving this for a stream, but I haven't done it yet. So literally all of the quests have been banged out. Everything has been done. World quests, everything has been unlocked. Everything has been discovered. Okay. I am ready for 1.1, guys. I am ready to sit back, relax, and grind out another new area but it's gonna be great it is gonna be great okay for the tower of adversity progression um i usually go for it's 10 and 10 on each side so i get 20 stars maybe push 21 on my better accounts if, it, if it's possible right uh, i think last time i got 22 no, I got 21, sorry. So last time I got 21 of these stars. That's like the best I could have done. And that was before I hit Union level 50 to upgrade my characters to 80. So um, yeah, I will be pushing for more. And I will be working towards my third team to be able to actually uh, tackle the Tower of Hazard. Now I also did clear, or I should say zero star Tower of Hazard. So I can kill the enemies in time. But... I just wasn't able to get a star, so I wasn't able to do it within like 90 seconds left on the clock, okay? That's um, basically the best I could manage, is just zero starring both of them with my best team. Okay, so for the holograms, I've got everything to difficulty 5. I have not tackled them for a while now, and after I hit Union level 50, I'm able to upgrade my characters even more now. So I will be trying these out. I'm just waiting to finish off my second team to be able to target the... Uh, the Tempest Memphis because that is the most difficult fight uh, with my current team that I have which is the Kalcharo and Yilin team I will be able to pretty I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to clear difficulty 6 for the for the Aches, the Heron and the, the Monkey however you know for the Thundering Memphis or for the Tempest Memphis he's a really he's got a high high electro resistance so my Kalcharo and my Yilin team just don't work they just don't do enough damage so I've got my Ye Yun team aka my Jian, for um, specifically to target the Tempest Memphis, which I'm building currently, okay? I think that's about it when it comes to actual progression, right? Like, what else, what else can I, what else can I show you guys? I mean, um, what, this? This has been fully banged out, like, I've, I've maxed out this. This is one of the funnest, this is one of the funnest, like, game modes in this game. Like, it is so fun, like, you don't even have to use your own units and you just can have a blast. In fact, it is really fun because you can use units in, in specific floors. You can use units that you don't have on your account and just completely destroy with them. Really, really fun. I can't wait for um, the new game mode for the Depths of Elusive Realm that's coming out in 1.1. It's going to be great, okay? It is going to be great. Th this, this is the disgusting thing to check out, okay? Th this is going to be the store. So, guys, I am buying the Lunite subscriptions. So, I am... I am renewing them so i got 27 days left here as you can see i have used up the first one now i've renewed it I'm, i've got the second one for the bundles i have brought out a lot of bundles here and um, that's because i got really really lucky with my yin pools although i did kind of got happy i got lucky on the weapon so i was able to um 
I was able to get a lot of these spare ones, which enabled me to buy some of these bundles. Some of these bundles are well, really, really worth it. As if you're a whale or if you spend a lot of money, they're really worth it. They save you a lot of, um, a lot of uh, wave plates, which then you can allocate those wave plates to something else. Um, the main example being the um, the skill trees, right? The skill tree essential materials. You can buy them out from here, which they are pretty expensive, but you can buy them out and you can save yourself a ton, a ton of wave plates that you could allocate towards XP or towards like getting money or other stuff like ascending your characters, right? So yeah, I did buy them out. They were um, <laughs> quote unquote worth it. You know what is worth it in a gacha game? You always waste your money no matter what. Uh, I haven't been buying any of these. I don't think I will unless there is like a, for example, if there is like a first copy that's really, really good for a character, I might get it. Um, it would have to be on like, if you play Genshin, it would have to be on like a Hutao or a Yellen level where it completely changes the gameplay, like two charges on your on your skill or unlimited stamina whilst doing your charge attacks. That's like really, that's that gives you a lot of power and it changes the playstyle and it gives you a lot of damage. So if there is a first copy that I can cop for a character that significantly increases the damage or changes a character's playstyle to be even better i will get it however if it's more than one i probably won't i'm not that big of a whale okay guys i'm not that big of a whale. i'm, I'm still broke at heart okay i brought out the oscillated corals title exchanges has all been brought out yada 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 you can see all the currency up here i'm saving the 160 here for uh, my pools based on whatever i'm gonna need and how lucky i'm gonna get but these ones i have been using on pretty much everything mostly money because money is the thing that i'm lacking on the most um, purchases, I have only been buying, I've I brought the top three basically, I've brought the top three. I will probably use this one if I get really unlucky on summons, just to get that extra pull in, but that's about it. I don't really like buying these out unless they are double procs, so I usually do this kind of purchase once a year. That's basically what I would, exp that, that's basically what I would recommend to people that have money to spare, but not too much money to spare, right? Um, is waiting for that yearly refresh to be able to use the double procs for these because it is a loads of money it is really irresponsible to buy especially if you don't really have the money please don't do it okay just stay free to play if you want to this game is really free to play friendly don't spend money on it unless you need to i just choose to because um i actually used more of these on refreshes to progress my character rather than actually being able to summon okay Having, like, saving a whole patch to get one character is not worth it for me, especially on launch of a gacha game. I would much rather skip that character or try and get lucky with the limited amount of pulls I get, but use those refreshes to be able to progress and have more fun at the beginning of the game. Now, I am rushing in the game, and, I'm, like, you know, it could cause burnout for some people. So, yeah, take your time if you want, but, like I said, play the game how you want, whether you want to spend or not, but be aware, be aware, okay, of what's happening. Um, this I've been using mostly for credits, as you can see. Uh, I haven't been able to buy this out. I have brought out the <laughs> the echo materials. I'm not sure if you guys can see these echo materials were are really really important. I was leveling up my characters a lot, so that's what I kind of focused on so far for the adversity exchange, uh, simulation train like simulation training exchange. I have been using um, obviously getting tuners, the gold ones. I haven't even got the thunder in Memphis yet, and uh, I have been exchanging a lot of shells as well. Now that I know that um, in 1.1 you will be able to basically exchange the blues and purples for golds, I will probably cop them at some point. However, obviously in 1.0 you weren't able to do that, so I just decided to ignore them because I was at a level where I only had gold echoes, okay? And Thundering Tempest skin, I will cop that whenever I beat any difficulty 6. It basically is what it is. Alright, last thing to check out is the characters. Now, my builds are, are okay. They've still got some improvements to do. However, I have been focusing on my main team, which is Kalcharo, Yinlin, and Verena. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly skim over them. I don't think you guys would want to take a deep dive. Wait, I, I, damn, I, I young the wrong, wrong thing. I don't think you guys would want to take a deep, deep dive into my characters, so I'm just going to move my camera here. You guys can have a look. Okay, my Kalcharo's got 80% crit rate. One, one um 240 crit damage it is 140 because for some reason the base 100 is also counted towards it so it's technically 140 crit damage but listen just bear you guys know the game right you guys know the game so 80 to 240 here i am using the autumn trace which is the battle pass weapon on him okay uh, i am using a 43311 on my calchara with the flautus as my main 
Echo because he actually gives you energy back when you use him the longer you hold him. This is good to just get your ult up if you're just really close to needing him. Um, it also saves you getting a bit of energy regen. Um, it's really, really good. And you want Kalchow to be on the field for as long as possible. That Thundering Memphis kind of takes ages. Uh, he's not the best one as well to use. I think that the other one is the better one. But as you can see, my rolls are so good that I decided to keep him. Uh, these are my rolls, right, uh, for my flautist. You, you feel, feel free to obviously pause the video if you care, right? Thundering Memphis stats are here. This this one I got really, really lucky. I'm, I need to make a short because this was funny. I rolled for this on stream and it was the most hilarious moment. This is one of the first... This was one of the first five stars that I rolled for and it just, this is disgusting, bro, it's disgusting. I was like, damn, bro, this game easy. Uh, the traffic light is here and then Vanguard Janrock is like the thing that I need to work on the most. Um, I can reroll this whenever I just put my resources somewhere else, right? He is, hold on, let me see. So his skill trees is 86666. Now I will be working towards his liberation next. That's basically what I'm going for next. I'll be using my wave plates to get my um my skill materials to basically get his liberation and maybe his skill. But um I am kind of picking and choosing what I want to upgrade for my characters because these are very limited. You know, you can only get a couple of them a week. So um after level six, level six is acceptable if you want to build it, guys. However, I guess I'll put myself down here. Damn, I have nowhere. I have literally no place to put myself in for you guys to see. There we go. All right, cool. All right, cool. Hopefully that's good. Um, anyway, as I was saying, yeah, after you get every skill to level six, um, just pick and choose and be very careful what you upgrade because these weeklies will actually gatekeep you a lot. Um, I would recommend going for the stat bonuses first these ones and ignore the attack ones obviously the stat bonuses go first this if it's good right obviously the inheritance skill if they're really really good obviously go for them most of them are so i would recommend you go for them as well and then uh, check your characters make sure to double check your characters see what gives them the most damage what you're actually using because there's a lot of things you might not actually use and then upgrade it accordingly okay he's um R or C0, whatever you want to call it. That's basically my Kalcharo. Yinlin, again, 80% crit rate. Oh my god, bro, everything is everywhere. Anyway, 80% crit rate, um, 257 crit damage. She's running the String Master, which is a best slot weapon. Okay, her signature weapon. I did get lucky. I did get the weapon. Um, I did not go to Hard Pity, but it was close. So I did kind of got shit on, but it is what it is. I am running her on the um, Moonlit Cloud set because she's running. I'm running her with Kalcharo to give extra damage to Kalcharo. Um, she already does damage as is. Even without the Electro set, she does damage. Now, if I want to run her standalone, I will obviously switch out Kalcharo's set and give it to her uh, with some changes because um, she needs more crit damage as opposed to crit rate. So I will switch some things out if I if I do that switch. However, yeah. Um, I will, I just keep her as this and she does enough. Okay, she does enough. Like, there's honestly, there's no need to change. Um, because I did get a couple of decent rolls. Okay, so my, my Heron is as follows. You can see it right there. Uh, my Electro Damage Bonus, both of them are really Copium. They could improve, they've got loads of improvements just waiting and pending. But I can't get Electro Damage Bonuses for this set, man. Like, it's really unlucky. It's really tough to get it for the Moonlits. Like, I don't know. I don't know, guys. Like, whenever I do get it, they roll shit. So I did roll through plenty of them, but it's really difficult because you could just get anything on these sets. And it's just like, god damn it, man. God damn it. This Cruise Wing is actually really, really good. It rolled really nicely. And then this is pretty Copium. Nice. Okay. Nice. Next. For her skills, I am going to pretty... I'm pretty much going to 8 everything so far. And max out her skill tree as possible. Because she benefits from pretty much everything. Her intro skill, not so much. But I'm still going to go for it. Because she will be one of my main characters that I will use. Um, so I'm just going to go for everything. Because everything is kind of useful for her. Um, yeah, that's pretty much how it goes. And obviously C0 or R0 as well. There we go. Verena. Verena is the character that I kind of been neglecting after I got her to 70, but that's because I never had the need to upgrade her healing or her survivability. Like, she just is good enough as is, right? So I've got her to level 70. I've got the variation on her, level 72. 
I have a healing bonus um, bell plus 20. So you could see, like, have a look at these echoes. Look, plus 10. This is a plus 20 energy regen one, just so you could get an ult off earlier. A plus 10 and a plus 10. Like, I have been doing nothing. I have been doing nothing. Okay, her skill trees is um, 6 all around with her healing bonus ones being upgraded. Now, after I ascend her, I'm going to increase these healing bonus ones whenever possible. However, at, the point, at, like, at this point in time, I really don't find it necessary. The reason being is... The, uh, the content that I tackle kind of one-shots me anyway. So if I don't play perfectly and get hit, I kind of am dead. So is there a point to heal? Like, is there a point having a healer or being able to heal more when you're dead after one hit anyway? You know, that's the kind of that's kind of my thought process. I don't know, guys. Yeah, Yun is the one that I'm investing in right now. He is currently level 80. I did bring him to 80 today. And I am working on the Verdant Summoned and putting it up to 82. He is currently level 70, but I have ascended it today. So, yes, I am. this is the next character I'm working towards. This character is solely for the Tempest Memphis or whatever you want to call it. You know, the difficulty 6, like I said, I am building him for it. Uh, it's going to be a fun challenge. It's going to be a really, really fun challenge. I can't wait to finish building him and Morteffi together and just challenge that boss and have an absolutely worst time of my life. Probably worse than the Elden Ring DLC. We'll see. Oh, man. Oh, talking about the echoes for this dude, bro. I have been grinding out the arrow sets for the double proc event. For the Tacit Field double proc event. And I have been constantly... Like, pretty much every day going around and killing all the monkeys, all the chaser raises, anything that's animal related or arrow related. I've just been been killing it. And I can't get good rolls on my onset, like, arrow damage bonus um, free cost. Like, I just cannot do it. Like, it, it is the worst thing possible. This rolled decent, but I need crit rate over crit damage for him. Now, this is a max roll crit damage. This is a really good roll. I will probably keep it unless I get, like, a perfect roll. Like, unless I get, like, a perfect roll for Yeyun, I will keep this on him, right? But this Chaser Razor always got his crit rate and crit damage, and... It's a lowest roll crit rate as well. So I'm looking for a higher roll crit rate with crit damage. And obviously like a heavy attack bonus would be nice. Or maybe not flat defense or flat HP. I would really appreciate that. Uh, the one costs are pretty decent. I still got one to work towards. It, it is what it is. Okay, like you just have to re-roll them until you get perfect rolls. That's basically the echoes, right? I haven't started working towards his skill tree yet, but I will definitely increase his crit rate because that's what he's lacking. So this is an extra 5.8%, sorry, 5.6%, which is really, really nice. And then I've got everything 666, but I'll obviously get his ult and his normal attack damage up. Um, I think I'll pretty much get everything up. Maybe not the intro skill, but Yeyun also deserves it. He also kind of benefits from everything. That's going to be my thought process as is. He is C0 or R0, and that's my Yeyun, guys. Okay. Jiang Xing, I have been kind of neglecting because I haven't had the resources to upgrade her fully. I have been using her side to side with Jian, but but I have been using her mostly as like a counter slash tank slash like um, crowd control unit. Uh, not so much as a damage dealer, as you can see low crit rate. Decent crit damage, but low crit rate, right? So, yeah, she's got a lot of work to do. I'm running her on the, on the Marcato, but whenever I will be able to get the 5-star guns, I will give her the 5-star guns or whatever they're called. Um, she's kind of got the crumbs from Ye Yun. That's the reason why she's not as good. Is If I run her standalone, I will be able to put Ye Yun set on her. But so far because i don't want to switch out yeyun i use i'm using him more than her she's kind of got the crumbs that he had before right so yeah as you can see you you, you can have a look at these but they they are not brilliant okay they are not brilliant at all they're very bad they're very bad pieces that will probably feed at some point her skills are also um all around sixes with the first skill tree being unlocked second skill tree gives a crit rate which i will be increasing 100 percent and uh, she is C0. That's pretty much it. That's how it goes. My Rover. Um, my Havoc Rover. I decided to wait to upgrade. Because I want to upgrade Havoc Rover. As my third team. With Dan Jin. And potentially Tao Chi. Right? Like these two characters. Th these three characters. It's is like the mono Havoc team that I want to build. Where... 
Uh, I popped the Dreamless. I popped like a triple Dreamless. Oh, sorry, a double Dreamless with Tauchi having the support, um, the support Heron most probably. And I just destroy everything. I just destroy everything. I switch between Dungeon and Havakrova and I just completely blitz the enemies, okay? That's the kind of team I'm working towards next. So until I'm able to get enough resources to build them both kind of back to back, I'm kind of refraining from building her. However, um, she is level 70 out of 80. I will be leveling her up to 80, of course, right? She has the 5-star sword. This is my choice 5-star um, weapon, which I chose for her. The uh, reason being is because there's a lot of characters that I want to build that will be... That will use this sword as their best in slot. So this was a really, really good choice. Echoes. I have not done anything to her echoes. I mean, I've upgraded the Dreamless because, I mean, it was rolling kind of decent. So I decided to roll it. If this rolls crit damage as the last substat, oh my god. This is like my first roll. It's going to be beautiful. Um, this is pretty decent for the Havoc one. This is pretty Copium. And then I haven't upgraded the one-cost echoes. Again, I haven't been upgrading her echoes because, again, like I said before, right? I'm, I'm not upgrading her yet. I'm waiting. Uh, I did upgrade her skill tree because it was kind of easy and I had the resources to do it. I will be upgrading even more. Extra Havoc damage is nice. And obviously she is C2. You'll be able to get more of these for free by completing the... Um, by uh, completing, obviously, the game when more of the game launches. Except For example, 1.1 tomorrow. Mortefi. So Mortefi is my Yeyun's support. Obviously he is really, really good with Yeyun. I was, I am building him, but again, I'm waiting to get more resources to obviously finish his build. He's on Cadenza as the weapon for energy region, so I could just spam my ults off cooldown and not have to worry about it. Um, I will be using the 5-star weapon when I do get it, and I will switch between Mortefi and um, Shisha for the weapon whenever I'm going to be using each character. He is obviously running Moonlit because it boosts Yeyun's damage too. His, he kind of also gets crumbs from my Yinlin, so I do share the one costs between him and Yinlin whenever I do change them because my one costs on Yinlin are really good and I could just switch them out. So these are just the crumbs. These were the bad rolls that I had on Yinlin that I switched out after I got good rolls for her. Uh, the free costs have to stay. I do have a energy regen um, lizard, basically, that... Wrote pretty decent. Energy regen and crit rate crit damage is nice. I will keep this. And I'll roll it to 25 and hopefully get a good roll. And this one is pretty copium. I'm looking for more fusion ones or better fusion rolls for him. Ideally, some energy regen because I will need it after I switch the weapon out. Crit rate crit damage and liberation damage because that's also really nice. Okay. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the rolls for my Mortefi. Again, six all around with the skill tree being upgraded, with more skill tree that will be upgraded after I ascend. And he's only C1. So you guys will see my Shisha, right? And you will understand why I got a Ye Yun and only have a C1 Mortefi. Okay, I did not get a lot of Mortefis because I basically got a lot of Shishas instead. Okay, with that being the case, let's talk about Ashisha. This character, honestly, I've been using her the most out of everybody else. After I got Calcharo, I was using Calcharo a lot. But also, I have been using her with a Calcharo. Like, my exploration team is basically Calcharo, Shisha, and um, Verena. The reason being is the Ghost Rider is really nice to traverse the areas, right? I use the Ghost Rider all the time. Like, it, I just love teleporting to an area, like on top of a cliff, and then driving off the cliff with the Ghost Rider, and you take no full damage, and you just traverse the land so much faster. And she's also really powerful. She's a really, really powerful character, and she's also fun to use. And... You need guns to do a lot of um, puzzles in the overworld. So it was only natural for me to actually have her out on the field. She's using the Undying Flame, which I'm not sure if... I don't even know if it's, good, it's a good weapon for her because I don't check the tier list. I don't check the best in slot. I don't check any guides. Um, but the intro skill discuss increases resonance skill damage. Resonance skill damage is where her most of her damage is... Like, where I, in my opinion, most of her damage is going out. Her ult also does a crazy lot, like, her ult does a crazy amount of damage, but the most sustained and most consistent amount of damage is from her skill, so I was just like, you know what, this seems like a good weapon for her, I will use this on her until I get the 5 star version. Obviously running 4 piece flames for her. <clears throat> now my, f my, my fusion pieces that are decent as well, okay, they, they wrote pretty decent. My favorite rider is as follows. You can see I got crit rate, crit damage, ult damage. That's all I wanted. The flats I will obviously change whenever I have the chance to change. 
Uh, the Fusion Bird, again, I've got the skill damage bonus, which is really good for her. Great crit damage and attack. What else can you want? Obviously, ult damage, but I've got flat HP instead because this game is bad. Um, this dog, again, create crit damage, skill damage and basic attack. Again, this flat attack is cringe, but 4 out of 5 is a decent roll. Um, doggies, one cost, so you can have a look at both of them. They're pretty decent, uh, but they both lack in crit rate, which is what I need for my Shisha. So I will be rolling for different ones whenever I get the chance, but these are good enough for now. That's basically how it goes. Six is all around, again with the skill tree being fully upgraded and will work towards upgrading it more when I get her to 80 and she's C5. So all I have been getting when I was summoning for Yeyun is pretty much Shishis. I got like two more Tefis and like six, not six, five Shishis because you get one for free. And I am one off on getting this last thing, which increases everybody's basic attack by 25%. It's huge. When I, If I use her, if I decide to use her with Kalcharo at some point, well, Kalcharo is going to be popping off with his damage. 25% extra damage on basics is crazy. With the ult, I might just scrap for Verena. I don't know. I might scrap Verena and just run full like Shisha, Yinlin, and Kalcharo, bro. Just go just go all in, bro. It's going to be, it's going to be crazy. I wonder what the damage difference will be. Because Verena does a lot of, like, Verena increases your attack by a lot. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's not. Maybe it will actually be less. But it's more fun, right? It's extra damage too. Um, <coughs> gang Gang. I have shelved her ever since I got Jiang Xing because I just wanted an arrow character. Um, and, you know, Jiang Xing also does some crowd control. She's way better at crowd controlling characters. Like, she is actually a really good character. It's just, again, lack of resources. I will definitely build her eventually and use her as a crowd control unit. But my Zhang Xing was there. She kind of crowd controls too. She does loads of damage. She does, like, damage negation. She gives you a shield. So I decided to build her over Yang Gang Gang. I kind of shelved her. But I will be building her eventually. There is honestly no point checking her out. I mean, she's got a three-star sword that I've just put on her at the beginning of the game. Uh, what is that? That's, like, nothing. I don't even want to have a look at it. Skill tree again, neglected. She is C1. I think I've got one copy of her when I was pulling. That's about it, right? That is about it. Everybody below Gang Gang is like... Oh yeah, Baiji is level 30 again. Like, I, I got Verena. Verena was my first ever 5-star character. So, I just shelved Baiji because I got Verena. Um, I might build her when I'm gonna be too lazy to switch Verena out. Or if I'm gonna need a second healer slash sustain, I might build her. But so far, I wasn't in need of it so i just shelved her okay and anybody below that is pretty much level one um and not build they don't have anything on them if you do care i will show you my copies so she is c3 dungeon is c4 i did get encore um will i build her probably not because i know chang Li is coming out so i will probably ignore her for the longest time yan wu c2 san hua c3 Tao Chi, C5. I need that one more copy, but I want to build her for that Mono Havoc team. I really do. I mean, this doesn't really do a lot, but it's just like, I want it, man. I want it. And then Auto, I'm probably not going to build Auto for the longest as well, but he's C2. There we go. That's that's the team. That's, that's, that's my account. Did I miss anything else? I don't, I don't think I missed anything, right? Yeah, my data bank is 20... I will be, it will be 21. I will max it out as soon as the 1.1 drops. Um, what else? Obviously, you can see I'm union level 54, nearly 55. Um, trophies. I mean, for anybody that cares, there it is. Total stars. This is what's completed. This is my journal. Um, gallery. Nobody cares. I think that's it, guys. Okay, I think that's it. I mean, that's everything yep all right that's it well that's my account listen guys share yours okay i think there is a, there, there must be like a uid tracker for uh wuthering waves out right now i want you guys to comment down below your uids and i want to check out your characters and your accounts okay i want to see how far you went before 1.1 and i want to see which characters you've built which route you've taken whether you're free to play or not it doesn't really matter i want to see your accounts okay so please comment down below and comment down below what you think about my account is it good is it bad am i ready for 1.1 let me know okay let me know Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you guys. Stay awesome. Have an amazing weekend.